this summer, the New York Times class consists of, and these are the main points that I'm going to be talking about for about 20 minutes, and then we'll look at one art article so you can see what will happen. The New York Times class, it's going to be five sessions over the summer. So it's weekly, but sometimes we miss weeks because it's the summer and things have to happen. There's lots of vacation and holidays. So the total number of classes is five. Each class is one hour per week. The class is divided into two parts. The first part of the class are key aspects about news and media. These would be things you would want to learn about knowing and understanding news media like reading a newspaper, or listening to a radio program, or watching a news on the television, or more importantly, reading the news or understanding the news from the internet. That's the first part of the class. The second part of the class would be, we actually read a news story from the New York Times. So every week you'll learn something about the world, either nationally or internationally. And the last things I want to talk about is a final project. On the fifth week, we do something unique. So that's the overview of the next 20 minutes before we actually read some of the newspaper. So what would happen in the first week, for example? The first week, we would discuss at the beginning of the class what the role of a newspaper is. So I'm going to ask a question quickly. Um, I'm going to ask anybody who wants to answer. Um, Lucas, how old are newspapers? Two questions. How old are newspapers in the world? And how old are newspapers in America? I actually have no idea. Great answer. <laughs> it is actually true. Here's what you need to know. The news has been written down in a printed form since the 16th century. That is a long time ago that news has been delivered in print form. I have and, a question. Sure, go ahead. When you said the 16th century, do you meet the 16th century BC or just the 16th century? Excellent question. It is the 16th century A or AD. Yes. Um, yes, so just to let you know, um, totally unrelated, but let's talk about it. Um, can anybody tell me when printing began as far as the printing press? Or who invented the printing press? In China? Well, China had printing, which would be wood blocks. They would carve the wood blocks and they would print and print, which technically is printing. So was somebody from China? Is it Johann Gutenberg? Ah, okay, so let's get to Gutenberg. Gutenberg was a German guy and he invented movable type. So instead of carving letters or characters or kanji and then printing, he could move type around. And he was the first guy who imprinted the printing press. And since then, information has been delivered all over Europe and around the world. Okay, so that newspapers have been happening for many, many, many centuries. So I just wanted to let you know that. But what's happening is news is changing. How we learn and how we understand news has been changing. So I'm gonna go back to my document, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna re reduce something for a second. Here's the, here's the issue, everybody. There are many of us, so I cannot see uh, anybody. Right now, I see three people on my screen. So if your hand is up or you send something in the chat, I will not be able to see it, okay? So let's take, go back to week one of the New York Times class. The first week, in the first half of the class, you would learn about the roles of a newspaper. What are the rules? What are the rules of reporting the news? What does it mean when you say journalistic free speech? Are newspapers allowed to print whatever they want? And are there any governing parts of the news? Who controls the news? Who can tell a newspaper you can and you cannot write a story? This is an essential part. Of, this is an essential part of American culture. The idea of freedom of the press, that you as an individual in America have the right 
to receive real news and without the government telling them what to write. We'll discuss that in the first class. Then, at the second half of the class, we'll discuss a world event. The second week. The second week, we'll talk about how you write a newspaper, how you write a story. So, two things that we'll discuss are the five W's and H. Five W's and H. So, let's talk about that for a quick second. Yvonne, can you tell me, what are the five W's and H? Who, when, why, what, where, and how? That is correct. If you're going to be writing a news story, you're responsible, the person writing it, has to answer all those questions and give those details. So as you read the newspaper, that this class will discuss how newspapers are written. The second thing we'll talk about is how you can use passive voice and active voice in your writing. And that really just means the focus of the sentence. It's sort of a writing style, and I'll give you an example, but if you took the class, we talk about it in more detail. So, for example, the sentence is, J.K. Rowling wrote Harry Potter. J.K. Rowling wrote Harry Potter. Passive voice, Harry Potter was written by J.K. Rowling. You move the focus around. And journalists... And Journalists will do that to change the focus. So that's really about a writing of a sentence. Then second class or second half of the class, we would read an article on that particular week. Third week, well, it is in time to talk about what a newspaper writes. Newspapers have two jobs. One, the newspaper writes about the news of the world, what happened yesterday. But the other thing newspapers are responsible for is writing opinion. Uh, Lucas, can you tell me generally, what is the difference between a news story and an opinion story? An opinion story is like telling uh, your, your thinking like and your opinion technically. News articles are just like, they just straight up give you, give you facts. That's a perfect answer. Yeah, their job is to say facts and it's a good choice of words. There's a big, that to say the word facts is very important. That's the job of a news story. Give me the facts. If you read a story and you're not reading facts, you're hearing a little bit of an opinion. Hmm, there's something wrong with that news story. So that's important to know. So in that particular week, we would talk about the writing style of opinion and the writing style of a news story. The choice of vocabulary. You will know that if it's an opinion, you're going to hear lots of fancy adjectives, big fancy words to make you think they're right. That's their job. But in a news article, it's very black and white. This happened, this happened, this happened. As Yvonne told us, it is who, what, when, where, why, and how. And also tone and influence. So that would be the third week. And of course, next, we would read something interesting about what happens in the world. Next, and this is important, misinformation, disinformation, and facts and truth. Misinformation and disinformation are two terms that you need to know. So I'm going to briefly talk about these for a second. Uh, Yvonne and Lucas have learned about these, so they understand them. What happens is there is a term called information and information is like what Lucas said. Information is facts. This sky is blue. The capital of France is Paris. And I am six feet, two inches tall. Those are facts, they're information. But then what's happening in the world right now is that some people are giving you misinformation. And the word mis comes from the Greek meaning wrong, wrong information. So misinformation is information that is simply not correct. I am five foot five. The capital of Paris is Berlin. Those are simply wrong facts. And what's happening in the world right now is that young people are receiving misinformation. 
The second term is disinformation. And disinformation is when I want you to know something that is totally incorrect. My job is to do something a little bit evil. I give out information that I know is not correct. And I do that because it will benefit me. Okay, so can anybody tell me, I know that I can't see everybody, but where would you as a young person receive misinformation and disinformation? Where might you receive that information? Um, like electric, like, elect, uh, like different yeah. media or websites. That is, on YouTube. You yeah, are absolutely like correct. Thank you for firing all those correct answers. What you're telling me is YouTube, social media, the internet, websites, all of these. Uh, actually, that's that's actually that, um, that end with dot com. Excellent. Austin, are you there? Is that you, Austin? Yep, I'm here. I oh, I'm fabulous. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you're here, Austin. Yes, uh, here. So let's go through this. What's happening is that young people are receiving information, but it's not information. It's misinformation and disinformation, and they're receiving it from websites, social media, the internet, various sources. And as young people, you're trying to figure out what's right and what's wrong, what's real, what's not real. Okay, so that would be the fourth class. And I want you to look at this particular chart for a second, just if you think it's interesting. The question in the chart is where children are getting their news. You'll notice that the largest group when it's young people and it's totally normal, if you find if you want to know what's happening in the world, well, you probably learned it from your family. Somebody tells you what's happening in the world, it's totally normal. But the second largest way you learn news is social networks. You're receiving it, looking at your phone, looking at your tablet, looking at your computer. The third is television. The fourth is a teacher or some other adult. Then the next group is friends. And you'll notice that way down there in that little tiny box are newspapers. And what's important to know is that newspapers are actually responsible for telling you the truth. So all the other groups, all the other groups that I just mentioned, they have no responsibility to tell you the truth. They could be telling you the truth, they could be not. But the one tiny little group, 8%, is the newspapers. So that's important to know as a young person. So let's talk about that. You've got lots of friends and they all say the same thing. It's true because I read it on the internet. Well, we know that's not the right statement to make. So on this particular class, which would be the fourth week, we would talk about the impact of social media. How is social media receiving and giving news? we would be able to learn about what is real news and what is fake news. And how do you know? And finally, what are the effects of misinformation and disinformation? Ryan, good to see you. How are you? Good. How are you? Oh, Ryan, I'm fantastic. Thank you for asking. Um, now, again, I apologize. If you have questions, I'm unable to see or understand because right now on my screen, if you can imagine, I only have two, just me and one other head. So I apologize if I'm not getting to your question. I'm not ignoring you. I just am unable to understand. That's fourth week. What's the fifth week? Well, the fifth week is we would create a news report. Each of you in the class would be responsible for developing, writing, and presenting a news story. We'd be doing that on the fifth week. So again, that's the first half of each class. Second half of the class is, well, let's figure out what's going on in the world. So second half of the class is reading of the New York Times. So what I try to do, and just to let you know, and this is also for the people that are taking my class right now, what I try to do is pick different kinds of news. So we're not talking with the same news each week. What I try to do is one week I pick an international story, something that's happening in the world, and the second week something that's happening national, because it's important to know what's happening locally in your state, 
in your country and what's happening in the world, in Myanmar, in Yemen, in Kenya, and in Thailand, all around the world. In Switzerland, in America. That is true. China and Asia and Africa. You're absolutely right. There's 181 countries. You just covered about seven of them. <laughs> yeah, the news is everywhere. Uh, and fortunately, just to let you know, the New York Times does a very good job of covering what's really happening in the world. So again, sometimes national news, sometimes international news. Next, what type of story is it? Well, sometimes it's a general story, a general news story. Sometimes it's a technology story, uh, finance, politics, the environment. Sometimes the story is about media. We're also going to talk about obituaries or even the arts. So quickly, can anybody tell me, yes. and I know I can't see you, what is obituary? Anybody know? Well, an obituary is one of these wonderful things that's usually at the back of a newspaper. That is absolutely correct. If someone dies or someone passes away, it's sometimes very important to tell us all about who she was. What did she do? What made her important?